Hey campers, George here, back in the man cave. Yeah, looking at another sharp and shiny. This guy from Kershaw. Subscriber recommendation. Huh. Let's check it out. So this guy is the Kershaw Iredale. Iredale? Uh, this name. <laughs> you know, these names are killing me. I'm a foreigner, I can barely speak English, and they come out with these names. This is an interesting knife. I think I might like it. Check it out. Look at that. Looks very nice. Can you see that? Very clean. So if you look at it, you can see how it has a Makata handle. Now, interesting, can you see that? It's almost uh, a green, greenish black. Now, I was, I was looking up and just checking them out, and they said that the originals are true black, but the latest ones are not. Hey, that's kind of random, but it looks nice. It feels nice. It's a, a fairly good size. You can see it in my hand there. I'm trying to decide what the pattern is. They don't actually say what it is. They just give it a name. Now we can look at the blades and I suspect that when manufacturers do that, they're not committing to a specific style or blade group. They've come up with their own. Even the shape of the handle, it's kind of hard to see. It's, it's big here and then it dips down and it gets thin at the bolster. It's got two bolsters, I would suppose, but the one, look how small that is compared to that guy. So that's interesting. Um, like I said, it's called the Iredale. It was recommended to me. I looked at it. The price was right. The whole budget thing, you guys have heard me talk about that. I, I It's very difficult for me to spend more than 30 bucks on a folder, especially the amount of them that I have get and show people and show you guys. And, you know, hey, I love knives. I just can't afford half of them. And I really haven't come up with a good reason to spend a lot of money on a folding knife when the lesser priced ones, Rough Rider, Marbles, Imperial, you name them, there's a bunch of them out there. They're all traditional style, traditional pattern makers, the Canoes, the Congress, the Barlow, all those. They all make them, and they all make them at a pretty reasonable price. Like I said, under 30 bucks. If you saw my, my videos on me trying to do scrimshaw, $30 and then included three knives from Rough Rider with white bone handles. Those knives, just like this, what's the difference? If it does what I needed to do and it does it okay, I'm okay. <laughs> but anyway, okay, we got that out of the way. Back to this guy. I, I got to tell you, it's got some weight to it. They say that the bolsters, all they say is steel. They don't say what kind of steel or anything like that. I, I assume that it is stainless. They are Big bolsters, very big, and you can feel the weight in them. It has the brass liners in there, very clean. These are very nice liners. There is no gap at all. Look at that. Very cool. How well do the blades line up? Well, considering there's three blades here, you are going to have one blade that is at an angle, but still, the other ones are right down the middle, and that one actually lines up in the middle. It's well done. It's well put together. I suppose we have to open it up to figure that out, right? What I was thinking about was on the handle here, this, this pin here, I can feel it. Barely, it's not a problem. I really have to feel for it. So once again, it's that whole, does it really bother you that much? That, that doesn't bother me. This feels very nice. The blades are stainless steel. All that good stuff. So let's have a look at the blades here. Like I said, there's three. And if you look at it, okay, this obviously is a California clip. Look at that long sweeping clip. And I, I, I 
had to look that up to find out why they call it a California clip. You can see it says Kershaw on there. And then on this side has the model number. And I think it's just the Kershaw logo. I'm not sure. Can't really tell. And then they have... Now, you guys probably know what this is. But if you look very carefully on that, on the Ricasso, see up there? I wonder if that's to do with manufacturing year and whatever. I'm not sure what that is for. But this clip is, is very nice. Ha! Huh. Wow. That actually, that feels very sharp. And the point is pretty good. They don't have a false edge to it. It's just the, the spine is just flat. You can see that. It's a nice blade. I'm not a clip fan. But, you know, I use them when I whittle. When I need to get into a really tiny little corner, you've got that nice long point. The reason it's not a good whittling blade is it's so far away, the tip, from your hand. And working like that is, I prefer a shorter blade to work with when I whittle. And this is what I'd use this for. I'm telling you now that without having looked at the blades, this is something I would carry in my pocket to whittle with. Here's the other blade. Uh, I'm going to say sheep's foot. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not so sure that that's a Warren Cliff. I wonder what they call it. They don't say Huh, I can't find any inf information on the blade types. Obviously, a California clip. I, I think this is more of a sheep's foot simply because it turns down really fairly quickly, whereas a Warren cliff typically is not that quick on the turn down. They all have nail necks, by the way, just a plain nail neck. Yeah, this one feels sharp. There's nothing on the uh, Rikasos there. It's just a plain blade. Yeah. Pretty solid. It's a nice flat edge, which is always a good thing. What is the other one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Pen blade. I'd have to say that's a pen blade. You know, some people say spear. No. Uh, you look at the angle of the tip is lower than the middle. It's not a spear. And this would probably have a false blade on the top here to give you that spear look. So this is a pen blade. Very stubby. Look at that. It's a very stubby blade. Nice for woodling. It's got a nice little point on it there. Nice to play with. So this, I, I like this knife. It feels, it feels very good in your hand. It's not big. Let's get some measurements on it quickly. This pen blade is to one and a quarter inches on the working edge. So from the tip to the choil. Look how big the choil is. <laughs> nice Ricasso on it. Uh, let's look at that uh, sheep's foot. This one here. And it's got that... The nice thing about it, you see how flat that, that blade is. It's dead straight, the cutting edge. So the length on that, two inches exactly. So from the tip to the choil, two inches exactly. And then the clip. Did I tell you why it's called California clip? I'll tell you that now. The length of this clip is long. Wow. Two and a half inches. From the tip to the choil as well, that working. It's got that flattish and then the slight sweep up. Uh, the reason it's called a clip, a California clip. Uh, if you look at the state of California, this would be the Pacific Ocean where my hand is here. And the shape of the blade is the same as California. That's where it comes from, allegedly. This is a nice knife. I like this. This is a, a good recommendation. Pleased about this. You guys have knives you want me to have a look at? Let me know. If you have a, a specific knife, you can send it to me, PO Box. I'll get it back to you. I'm not going to keep it. It's your knife. Send it to me. We can share it with everybody and send it back. There's always, it's always a good idea. I'd love to know. A favorite knife, you have a favorite knife that's a little unusual. Closed, it is four and a half inches exactly, bolster to bolster. We open it up, fully open, 
maximum length is six and a quarter inches. So there you go. You can see it in my hand, Joe. And like I said, this is sharp. It feels really sharp. Mm, didn't cut it very cleanly, but it does feel sharp though. Let's try the sheeps. Oh yeah, it's a little furry, but <laughs> you can whittle with it. And after all, isn't that why we have sharp in Chinese? Speaking of whittling, I got my stick that I've been whittling on for use when I'm looking at knives. Let's see how we do here. And I'm going to start with my favorite. Pen knife. And let's see. Let's make a... Hold on. I can move the camera. How's that? Is that better? You can see what I'm doing, right? So we're using the pen blade. Kind of like it. Hold on. Being all safe and whatnot. Okay. Hopefully you can see this. I've, I've told you showed you how I whittle um, so I'm just going to use this little pen it's not the right one to make a stop cut just go around hopefully in a straight line just like that can you see it right there now what I want to do is, is a round reduction you got to remember that when you when you're doing a round reduction, uh, the width of the blade determines how well you can get in there to make it nice and even and smooth and flat at the bottom and looks clean. To do that, you have to be at least be able to get the knife in there on the width. So you measure from that stock cut, the width of your blade, roughly, I like to go a little bit more and do the same thing again. Cut it around and hopefully it lines up just like that. So now you can see the two cuts there a little bit wider than my blade. That allows me to go this way and that way and then get in and clean it out and make it nice and flat. And I'll show you what I mean. So you've got your stop cut and you can cut into it just using my thumb to uh, dig in there. So you can see all I'm doing is just slicing in, in towards the one stop cut on the one side. And I'm using the pen blade, it's not ideal. You want a bigger, heavier blade for this initial cutting. And you can clean it off, just run your knife over there and there, it breaks off. And here we have the sheepy. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier. I can get a lot harder on the uh, the digging down. I've got more blade to work with and just slice into it like that and then trim off. Keep uh, increasing the depth of your stop cut. Just keep going around on it and you can see we're getting the one edge there. See that? Adding to deepening that stop cut there's a lot of bark on here. Typically, I would take the bark off. On this one, I'm using the bark of this stick as a highlight. You can see there just to highlight that twirl. That the pressure on the blade, and this hand controls how the blade goes. Now, ideally, if I turn it this way, watch when I push down. I want to drag the knife that way. You should slice with it. So when I pull down, you can see... I'm not going straight in, I'm cu cutting across. So you slice when you do it. And it gives you a cleaner cut. If you just keep pushing, you're going to be keep using the same part of the blade. The middle is going to wear away. Sure. And just keep working your way around. You see that? Now we're starting to get a little bit of a, an edge there. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. You're going to uh, dig into that stop cut. The deeper the stop cut, the deeper you can slice every time. And you're just going to keep adding to it. And then you work this way, the other side of the 
reduction. You change your mind? Come on. There we are. And here she is. Say hello to Mary. See her here? We're going to work back on the other side, on the other stop cut. Same thing again. You just keep digging in. Slicing into it. And you work your way around. I've just been going at it here. I'm not going to go too deep with this round reduction. It takes too long to show you on the video. You've reduced it. Now, why you want that blade, this to fit in the blade, is that you have to keep everything flat. Yeah? You want everything to be nice and flat. This, the, the width of this round reduction allows me to get in there and do this. So as you can see, I can actually get my blade in there to make it as smooth and as level as possible. This area here, you can see how rough this looks, okay? But when I turn around and go to those smooth little cuts that I made before, it's suddenly a lot rounder and smoother. So you'd work this way, and then you turn the stick around, and you work back, back into it this way. And of course, you can clean up as you go. Just keep working around and then you clean up your edge here and that's just a simple round reduction we didn't use a clip there must be something on this piece of wood I can use the clip for if you want to really get fancy and get this area here where this piece comes together here and get a nice clean finish here you can get that tip right in there of course, I chose the wrong piece. And you can really get in because that tip is really small. And you can work a nice little angle there to sharpen it up to make it look cleaner. Uh, i got to show you this, what Mary's doing. Do you see that? She's in my fishing bag. She crawled up the chair and into the fishing bag. Mary, what are you doing? Hey, you going to lie in there? Oh, Lordy. I can't see her. Where are you? Goof oh. <laughs> this is my life. Fortunately, in the bag was empty. I'd taken all my stuff out there normally there's sharp stuff in there and that what do you do now look how clean that point is whereas before it was rounded so that's the advantage of a clip you can get in there and make those little delicate pointy cuts because the width the depth or the width or whatever you want to call it of the blade now if you want to do a round reduction that's really thin you can see here how much smaller I can make that round reduction because this is so thin. So as you can see, we added a little piece to the whatever you want to call this, my test stick. That's the real reason I show you knobs. gives me an excuse to cut up some wood. Just say. The Kershaw. This is actually a nice knife. I really, I'm surprised. I didn't know... That, you know, once again, I'm finding out that manufacturers are making a traditional style knife. How many modern day knives have multiple blades in them? They've taken a traditional and changed the handle material and, and things like that to make it look more modern. But it's still a traditional with multi blades. The, you know, these days, the new knives, just single blade. The Kershaw, Iredale, good recommendation. It's a nice size. It's not huge. It's not uh, overwhelming. Carry in your pocket. A little heavier than most, but still, it's a nice knife. Look at that. <laughs> it's a. I almost want to say it is a Whittler style. What do you do? Well, you like 
you share, you subscribe. <laughs> you know the story. Like these sharp and shinies. And good recommendation, like I said. Uh, I'm always willing to look at something as long as it's in my price range. You'll be safe out there. Especially with these sharp and shinies. This guy was pretty sharp. Uh, I think it felt very sharp on my finger. I think maybe a little run over a ceramic rod or on a strop would have made it better. Thanks for watching. Always appreciate it. We'll see you again soon.